six. Six hundred grams, give or take. Oh, it's just six, so eight. super moving wheel, that. What is, I'll do a proper intro later, but what is this? So this is a load cell. Uh, so this measures the spoke tension. Uh, and then what we can do is we can transfer that back to the calibration side of it so we can get the spoke tension exactly as we need. So the more tension that we apply, the higher the number. So because the bird spokes are not like a normal traditional spoke, when we get a batch of bird spokes in, we test each, not so much each spoke, but we'll test each batch and make sure that the batch of spokes correlates to the tension numbers that we've got. Otherwise, the tension numbers could vary between sort of 10, 15, even 20%. And it's basically you're just, yeah, pulling tension through it, right? With pulling a, tension a and recording and... it, yeah. So that's just a strain gauge. Yeah. Uh, the actual, that, that section there is just the strain gauge. So we've just got it measured into a, or allocated into a steel bar there. We load tension on it. We're using a traditional nipple, which is what we would use on the wheel build. Um, and we're just pulling load on the spoke itself. Darren, what are we making? We are making a very, very lightweight pair of wheels. <laughs> With string. <laughs> <laughs> With some glorified shoelaces. <laughs> no, 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 all, all jokes aside. So for those that don't know, these are bird spokes. For those that actually do know what they are, what their purpose is for, these are ultra light poly spokes, essentially rope spokes. And although these reduce the weight of the wheel set dramatically, they also help with the, the quality of the ride. So these make a lot of modern carbon wheel feel a lot more supple. So many things about this look wrong to me right now, but somehow this here ends up like this. It's magic. So today I am with Darren who runs Strata Wheels, which is, where are we? So we are right at the foot of the South Downs in West Sussex yeah. and we're in a place called Arundel. Nice um, bottle cages. Yes, very nice bottle cages. <laughs> so we're down, we're down south, I'm gonna say that, because I'm very south right now. And we're basically, we're, and this whole series of videos that you will have seen about the, the hill climb bike that we've been filming over, I think five or six videos now. This is the last step in finalizing the bike for the National Hill Climb, which is this weekend. And we're basically, Darren and I have been talking for months about building up a very, very lightweight set of wheels. I reached out to Darren because from my knowledge, he's probably one of the best wheel builders in the country. He has his own wheel brand, Strata Wheels, but also works with, you know, multiple other brands of wheels. So we're basically building up a set of super lightweight reserve 34, 37 wheels using the bird spokes and the extra light hubs to make something that will hopefully bring the hill climb bike down to under six kilos. That's the goal. Easy. He's confident, he's confident. I, I'm. I'm not certain yet because I don't truly know what weight these wheels are going to be. But at the moment we're weighing 6.2 kilos and the goal is to get hopefully under six kilos on a disc brake road bike ready for the National Hill Climb next weekend. And today Darren's just going to kind of run through briefly the process of building with these crazy <laughs> shoelaces. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> string I still don't understand how this works but yeah it's pretty crazy they're literally pieces of string which as you can see they're like looped through here and then these are the bits that then go into the rim it's mental if say for example Darren we wanted to take these out and use them on a different hub or you know for a different set of wheels is it easy to do 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's time consuming, um, but at the same time, these can be taken out. Obviously, if we're putting them onto a different rim or we're putting them onto a different set of hubs, then you can remove the pegs. So this basically here is one of the pegs. Um, so tic -tac. this essentially, yeah, this is a small tic tac. Um, it's a hardened, bonded piece of the spoke material. Um, and can you see this small loophole here? Yep. So if I open the loophole, Essentially, this peg drops into the loop like so, and then you pull the spoke and it'll tighten the loop, and at the same time, it'll pull the peg in place. Now, at the moment, the pegs are quite pronounced, so you can see the pegs on almost every single spoke. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll keep an eye on these uh, when we lace the wheel up, when the wheels slowly bring that up to tension by the time the wheel gets up to its completed tension you probably won't see the pegs at all um, and that's why they have the pegs they cut the pegs at a specific size so the spoke tension is so tight that it will draw the peg into the hub flange uh, i get you yeah and so if you come around and have a look at this wheel you can see a small amount of peg left over but not a great deal yeah it's almost gone isn't it that's right so it draws it into the hub now the hubs that we're using here are the extra light um, Cyber SPD3s. And the reason why we use these on the bird builds more than anything is one for, for weight, but also as well, extra light and bird have worked really close together. And this particular hub set, so the front and rear, these have um, the specific 2.7, I think they're about 2.7 mil hole that's drilled into the hub. So you can still use a traditional normal straight pull spoke, but at the same time, you can use a bird spoke and you don't have to do any prep work. So usually with a traditional hub, you'd have to prep the hub and by prepping it, you'd need to drill the hub flange out and you'd need to ream any rough surfaces off of the hub. Bird provides some of the wire spoke pullers. So uh, as I showed you a moment ago, that's how we pull the spoke through the hub flange. These lads. That's it. And then these here are just essentially reaming tools. If I grab a J-Bend hub, what you would have to do with a like one of the King hubs here is you would have to drill the hub out so the hub was slightly larger. So usually you'd go, you'd go up to around about a 2.5 mil hole in these and then to remove any debris off rough surfaces that might damage the spoke, pop this onto a drill or a Dremel and then you can ream out both sides of the spoke hole so they're nice and smooth. So it's nice that Bird provide you with that kit, otherwise you'd be you know, searching around for these small little parts. That's a lot of extra work, unless the hub is already prepared, right? Correct, yeah, and that's one of the reasons why we use the um, extra light hubs. I mean, we've been an extra light dealer for, for donkey's years, even before we set up Strato, I was using a lot of extra light hubs for, for kind of specific builds. Um, and obviously extra light have moved into doing mountain bike builds now. Uh, so mountain bike hubs in boost and in non-boost options. So really now we can build a ultra lightweight gravel wheel set with the bird spokes, which will also reduce the weight, but also make the wheel set nice and supple to ride. As I mentioned before, the spokes give a lot of compression to the wheel, far more than a normal traditional steel or a aluminium spoke does. Um, and so um, if you take a look at Bird's YouTube channel, um, they've actually got some specific data that they've taken from different tests mm. um, so that's quite interesting to look at I'm not actually too sure of the numbers offhand myself but it's worth we'll, a look we'll put like a link here that means with extra lights specific bird hub if you like their straight pull version it means you only need to use the pegs so those small pegs that we just showed you a moment ago that's the only other component that you need to insert now uh, Bird actually have worked with a, a couple of hub manufacturers to produce specific hooked hubs. Um, we haven't used any of those yet. Um, that will make the lacing process so much quicker. Um, you'd probably lace a pair of hubs in a couple of minutes. Um, the downside to it is they're nowhere near the weight of a set of extra lights. So even putting those pegs in is is worth it's worth the time. I mean, they weigh they weigh nothing at the end of the day, right? 
Yeah. I mean, I know there's a lot of them, but it's still, it's, it's like a negligible amount of weight, right? I mean, a pile of those, you probably wouldn't get even a, a number off of the scales. Yeah, exactly. You know? um, and you're only using 48 of them. So you're using 48 bird spokes, 48 pegs, and you're also using the nipples or the whatever nipples you want to use. Um, bird like to use the sapim nipples which is what we're using on your build today they have the secure lock head system on them so because those spokes are designed to flex and uh, absorb shock what it does mean is that you do need a secure lock nipple on there i'm sure some people use it without it um, but we would recommend that we use secure lock nipples uh, or our alpina abs locking nipple for almost every wheel build that we carry out Stringed up. All stringed up, ready to go. Spaghetti. So then this, we throw it on here, and then we throw that on there, and then it magically is a wheel. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> magically because you're doing it, and you're a clever man. So a little bit time consuming, but essentially yes, we can pop that on there, and we'll sort out the, uh, the mess and then we'll lace it into the, the rim. So you just lace it into the rim like a traditional way. It's no specific spoke pattern. Everyone uses these noble rigs, don't they? Everyone copies these noble jigs and they need to stop it. <laughs> they need to let, let Johnny work his magic and just buy one from him. Because this is what, uh, they have these at Saddlewack, yes. noble ones. Everyone, yeah. everyone that I've seen who builds wheels raves about Johnny's rig being it's the best thing yeah John, Johnny's are really good also as well there's a ton of spare parts for them and he machines a lot of his stuff in house as well so like we've had a few spare parts over the years when we've worn through them but um, I mean that is one of his earlier jigs I'd probably say we've laced I reckon we've probably laced about six probably around about 6,000 wheels on that leg. 6,000 wheels? Yeah. On that? We've we've had this for years. That's, this is a golden oldie, this. This is Michael's. Um, and we've put a few uprights on it, um, but they're just solid. They work really well. And obviously, as you can see from here, they've got the rim sizing adjusters on there. So you can just walk it straight from like Brompton size 16, 3, 4, 9, 20 inch, right the way up to 650B and also 29 inch 700. So it's a very well thought through design, isn't it? Yeah, really, really simple. And like I said, you know, they, they, this one here, we've also got a third one as well, but this one here is obviously bolted down. But the plus side is if you ever want to do anything mobile, then they're nice and light. You can just travel away with you. You can take these apart, these arms as well. So just super well thought out. To be fair, John, because Johnny is a wheel builder, he knew exactly what he was doing. So he's a good tool maker, but also at the same time as well, he's, he probably won't mind me saying this, that he's, nowadays, he's probably a better tool maker than he is wheel builder. But back in the day, he was doing it full time like us. So his jigs are spot on and his tools are as well. We've got a variety of his different tools, but um, equally we've made some of our own over the years, but these are the boss, these jigs. So basically the other goal is, this. these all need to go into here, but, because it's a string, as you can see, that looks shorter to me. So we've got to find the right lacing pattern. Get them in line. And then we'll start firing them in. Are there different lacing patterns that people could do? So with a traditional J-Bend hub, you remember the King hub I showed you earlier? This one. So with a J-Bend hub, you can lace multiple basically um i mean i wouldn't advise it on a disc brake hub but you can lace radial one cross two cross three cross and on some of the higher spoke counts like audax heavy duty wheels cargo bikes tandems you can also lace four cross as well um so that builds a stronger wheel um, and when you say cross do you mean is that the position of the how it sits correct yeah so that's the amount of times that the uh cross passes each spoke so as you can see here, I mean, this is what they class as virtual three cross because the hub does cross inside the hub drilling. But essentially this is two cross. It goes underneath 
and underneath and this one here goes straight over the top so this crosses once crosses twice um, with traditional spokes like steel spokes most of them interlace so effectively you go under and over with the bird spokes i'm not too sure whether there is an advantage to to interlacing on these but uh, but we don't and with with these wheels or with these spokes we tend to just lace them direct mm. um, also as well the rim is super stiff so we want to try and get the most out of the spokes make sure that they are as compliant as possible so rather than tying them here or joining them together we just run them loose so this one's got a bit of tension in to do so we'll get that one laced up and we'll finish this one off this this is a good tool for for wheel building so it's a right angle tool so you can bring the wheel up to tension quicker more efficiently but also as well you can't necessarily count the amount of clicks but you you kind of over over a period of time you get an idea of how many turns you are putting on so that's a really good tool i'll show you this in use shortly but essentially what you do is we've got a machine socket there and you can turn the nipple inside the wheel so you can count how many turns we've also got some different sockets as well which have a, an insert pin in the end so we can actually use those on the drill to speed up the the process of the lacing and then that way each and individual spoke nipple is tightened to exactly the same tension um, so after that we'll put the wheel through the de-stressing machine and then we'll then transfer just over to hand tools so it's nice to speed up the lacing process but the fact is you can't really speed up the truing mm. much quicker than what we're doing already yeah so um a lot of it it just comes down to to just speeding up inserting the spokes on the bird setup um and as i said to you earlier the the, the plus side to that is we're not prepping these hubs they're pre-done already the darren's like loosely laced up that sounds quite Loosely laced. Loosely laced up the front wheel. We just picked it up and been like, oh, that feels light. Um, let's find out. 500 on the dot. 500 on the dot. That's not bad. Bad. Could be lighter. Could be lighter, but it's, uh, it's wide and deep, this rim, so. This is a challenge. 1,109. Two wheels. Admittedly, we haven't got cassette rotors on here or anything yet, or tires or anything, but 1,109 is pretty damn impressive. I think that's impressive. Not bad. We'll make well, lighter ones next time. Next time round. <laughs> Change the profiles, we'll go a bit lighter. So what we're doing, Chris, we're just running over the tensions here now. So we're just checking the tensions and then we're gonna make some adjustments to these. So what we're looking for is similar numbers all round. So I see that one's reading 167, 168, this one here, 166, 165. So these ones here obviously are well within the tolerances. Um, we'll do that on both sides of the wheel as well. So we're gonna measure the spoke deflection on both sides of the wheel, make sure that they're both within the numbers that they need to be. Um, and what that will ultimately do is not only will it build a more reliable wheel but also um, a stiffer wheel um, not more so from a sort of torsional perspective really because the um, there's only a few there's only a handful of spokes in this wheel there's only 24 so the more uniform they sit the more reliable this wheel will be and the better torque transfer that you can apply from obviously cassette hub spokes tire road so it's all it's important obviously to get these to uh, to get these tension correctly so that's basically what we're doing now we're just working on tension bring it up to tension making sure that they're nice and even and they make a great sound nice sound so now they're getting up on tension they almost sound like a normal spoke so there's not much difference between that and a normal <clears throat> spoke in the way that it sounds Obviously they resonate off of the carbon rim slightly, so with a tire on they'll sound a bit different to this, it'll deaden the noise down a touch. 
balancing out the tension uh, whilst keeping an eye on how true the wheel is as well. So obviously you can see that the wheel is slightly out of true there. That spoke is a little bit too high. So what we're gonna do is just drop this one off slightly. And then this one here, we're just gonna pick up just a small amount. It's literally like uh, the tiniest of turns. That's right, so that's ironed out that lateral run out now. And then what we will do is check the tensions again and just run through it as many times as need be. So we don't de-stress the wheel after every time we've made a spoke adjustment, but it varies depending on what type of spoke you're using. But generally we would probably de-stress a wheel anything between 15 to 20 times and obviously this de-stressing rig the one that we use here runs through a cycle so it starts off at a low compression then it ramps up through high and then it drops back down again um, so it helps stress relieve the spokes and every point of contact so obviously the pegs it's seating down into the hub so you can see the pegs are nicely seated into the hub now and then this particular reserve rim uses a, a steel spacer, basically, uh, should I say, steel washer um, over the nipple. So we want to make sure that those are all seated in as well correctly. Um, <clears throat> that's the force that's going through it. Correct. And then obviously you do the other side because it's different spokes, right? Yes, that's right. So again, we're just using some handmade pucks here just to run over on top of the hub flange. You can really see the deflection in the wheel. Um, this is pushing around about 400 pounds of pressure onto the wheel. So right now, these spokes are less than hand tight. And then as the wheel deflects, the spokes can tighten again. This machine, I just find it really interesting. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think it's the noise it makes. And then the fact that it takes all the tension out and then it's back. Kind of, I don't know, I, I just find it a satisfying machine. Well, we always used to de-stress by hand and to be fair, on a lot of new builds, just to test the rims, we still do the same. So we still, we still de-stress a lot of wheels by hand. The problem that we had was when we started going over to carbon sort of 10 years ago, your arms and hands weren't physically strong enough to compress the wheel down. So, you, by sticking with just hand methods, it meant that some of the wheels had to come back for a retrue. And if you're if you're local to us, well, that's absolutely fine. But the problem is that we ship a lot of wheels out and sometimes ship wheels overseas. So it's just trying to make sure that we could de-stress the wheel so it's standalone. Tensions were nice, and also at the same time as well, they weren't going to drop tension, um, even even a, a tire on a wheel when you inflate a tire on a wheel you'll notice that there's a lot of spoke tension drop so that's fine because the rim and the tire combination and even the spokes are designed to handle that but if you start running the tensions too low when you ship wheels out you tend to find that by the time you put a larger volume tire on but typically like everyone is using these days 28s and above the higher the volume of tire, the more compression it will put on the outside of the rim. So you can imagine it's just squeezing the outside of the rim, compressing the rim, making the rim diameter smaller and ultimately dropping the spoke tension off. So, I mean, I'm sure every wheel builder will, will stress the same that it's spoke tension is so important, but it really is because you only have 24 spokes in this wheel. That's it. Nothing else is, is assisting the rim and the, the hub combination together. Uh, I mentioned early on in the video that you can speed up certain processes like lacing, spoke preparation, but when it comes down to truing a wheel, generally the wheel will be done when it's done and depending on what components you're working with obviously stainless steel spokes 
even aluminium spokes, they settle down much quicker, which means the process is much quicker. However, with the bird spokes, the process is a much longer process, basically. It's, you're, you're, you're reliant on these fibers tightening themselves together to create a good wheel. What about carbon spokes then? Carbon spokes don't really, you, when you de-stress a wheel with carbon spokes, you don't necessarily de-stress the carbon. All you do is you de-stress the steel insert or the aluminium insert into the hub end and the same thing into the, uh, into the rim edge. Mm -hmm. um, so the process is much quicker. Um, we've been working with a few different uh, carbon spokes uh, testing carbon spokes of late um, just to see how they react um, and the one thing I will say is that the, the the time spent building the wheel is can be much quicker um, but again because the spokes are laid quite often in a unidirectional sort of pattern uh, or layup it does mean that the spoke gauge varies in size in, 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 in width so when you put the tension meter on there, you can quite often get a completely different set of numbers from each spoke. Um, and I guess in time, that will get better. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that the manufacturing process on that will improve. Um, we actually use a couple of carbon spoke options ourselves, which um, we've, you know, we've, we've been super happy with. But again, it's kind of completely the opposite to this kind of spoke where this spoke is super light. This is even lighter than a carbon spoke. But at the same time as well, these are very comfortable to ride. Do you think the, the comfort factor is why they're becoming popular for gravel and mountain biking as well? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, most people will just put these on the scales and think, wow, you know, super light. And a lot of people have probably bought them just because they're super light. Obviously, we're fitting a set in your wheels to, for one for weight, purpose, yeah. really. Um, but actually, you could use these as daily riders. Remember that the rim is used as a daily rider. Mm. This rim itself, the 34 and the 37 rim, obviously come on multiple stock bikes. So you can use these wheels on a daily basis and there's no reason why you can't use these spokes daily too. Um, a lot of wheels in the States and even in Europe now are built with bird spokes. They're durable. They're surprisingly durable. I mean, they don't look it, but they are super durable. Oh yeah. <coughs> 